Well, I'm in my old clothes and I'm covered in dust because I've just spent the afternoon stripping and sanding the body from my cheap project guitar, my Casino Strat copy. From a distance, the old finish kind of looked okay. I guess you might have seen the guitar in a few videos, but uh, up close it had lots of marks, scratches, dints, and other sort of marks. On the back it actually had you know, five or six chips that went right through to the bare timber. I was thinking about respraying, but when I saw the um, grain in the electronics cavity, I decided to take it back to bare timber so I could do like a tinted finish. If you are thinking about stripping a factory poly finish, well, there's a few things you need to think about. If you're planning a solid color refin, then usually you're better off just pre uh, preparing the original finish and just spraying right on top of it like I did with Project Barocca. But of course, if you're planning a clear coat or a burst or some other kind of trans finish, the original paint will obviously have to go. Guitar factories are always gonna put aside the best looking body blanks for sunbursts and stuff. So if you are gonna strip a solid color, don't be surprised to find mismatched timber, glue lines that aren't parallel with the center line, even filled knots and kiln checking and stuff. So if you can get a look at the timber underneath as I did by skimming a route or two or having a look in the neck pocket, it's not a bad idea. It may help you decide whether or not to strip the finish. Having said that, it is still kind of a leap of faith, and this body does have a few streaks and stuff in the timber on the back. Um, but honestly, the finish I'm planning is kind of semi-translucent, so I think it'll be fine. Stripping a poly from a factory is a bit of a job, but weirdly, I quite enjoy it. I just like the process of you know, cutting back all of that really hard, shiny plastic and sort of revealing the tree trunk underneath. If you've got a heat gun, that will certainly fast track the process, but that's pretty awkward in the cutaways, for example, and with the high bill sanding sealer that's underneath, because it's so hard and its thickness is quite unpredictable, it's very easy to gouge up the wood by mistake. For the edges, I use a cabinet scraper, AKA card scraper, it actually makes pretty short work of it, but you certainly need safety specs because that really hard poly just kind of shatters and flies everywhere. Contrary to popular belief, paint stripper will break down a factory two pack poly, but it's best if you scratch it up with 60 grit or 80 grit first, and you'll need to be patient. It may take several hours or even overnight for the finish to bubble up, and you'll probably need several applications to get right down to bare timber. Plus, it certainly helps if you can still get this old school, smelly, burn your skin, nasty methylene chloride stuff in your part of the world. Here in Australia, if you go to Bunnings, the poly stripper is the only one uh, that still has that uh, nasty chemical in it, but it's probably the only one that'll be effective on what is essentially an industrial coating. I've already sanded this with 80 grit and 120 grit. The tip there is to make sure you're using a block on all the flats and the sort of convex parts of the sides to keep the shape correct. The top tip for sanding cutaways and stuff is to keep an eye out for this kind of cardboard tube. Uh, your hardware store usually throw these out because they get lino and, and uh, plastic and stuff on rolls in it. I have you know two or three of different sizes. For the rear chamfer, I actually use this big guy, uh, sort of working like that. If you just sand these sort of shapes just by hand, you'll end up with uh, ripples and waves and stuff into it, so um, that's the tip. I do have to get on and sand this with 240, 320 and probably 400 as well before I do my custom finish. But I want to test fit my new pick guard before I do that. Now, if you are customizing a Strat or you're building a parts caster or something, this is the sort of thing that you'll come across all the time. When you buy parts, even if they're genuine fender parts, they almost always need some kind of fettling. And you can see already that there are lots of holes that don't line up. This doesn't fit with the neck. Uh, if I get up and have a look at it in this direction, uh, the pick guard actually has to come this way. And so I'm gonna have to remove a little bit of material just here.
Yeah, well those strings at the neck pickup certainly seem to line up quite well. If I can get them lined up in the bridge pickup as well. That's not too bad. The fitment around the neck has improved as well. Let me just back this up. The gap around the bridge is just a hair off. It's a little closer on the treble side. Uh, but everything else looks okay. This curve here doesn't match the body either, so I might actually just take a little material out of there as well. Let's see which screw holes line up. So with that all lined up, there's really only one existing hole that I can reuse, and that's that guy there. There's two or three that, are, that miss the mark completely, and there's about four or five that are just slightly off in one direction or another. And if I force a screw into those, it'll actually just pull the pick guard in the wrong direction or, or buckle the pick guard or, or the screw just won't sit down flat and look right. So I'm going to fill all of the other holes. Since uh, these are all going to be covered by the pick guard, you don't have to be too fussy about how you fill them. But if you just use a paste filler in the holes where I'm drilling the new hole just next to it, uh, that's going to be a problem. So I am going to fill these uh, with some kind of doweling. And I've looked around and I found this uh, these bamboo skewers up in my kitchen. They are uh, 2.4 or thereabouts. So I'm going to drill these out to 3.30 seconds. So the next step is to tweak the uh, shape of this pick guard. Then I think I'll refit it and I'll center punch some holes, maybe even drill two or three as well, so I can uh, refit this in exactly the same position once I've applied my finish. I also want to do much the same job with the rear cover. Yeah, well the gap around the bridge looks nice and even. And this is improved, it's still not perfect, but if I keep going, I'm gonna run into this hole. So I think I'll just live with it. I check out the uh, rear covers. If I line up the holes for the strings, well, you can probably see that the covers are actually quite a bit different in size. And uh, these holes, they don't line up at all. So that's just par for the course when you're building parts casters or, or modding vendor style instruments. So it turns out I wasn't really happy using any of these original holes, so I've actually filled all of them, which means to fit my new plate I've got to find a center line, and the trick with that is to measure the between the inner edges of the outer two holes of your bridge, which in this case is 47, and then mark my center line on my tape there. At the other end I've just used center lines from these bolt holes, if you're working on a vintage instrument, there's every chance these won't actually be equidistant from true center line. I think, I think in the old factories, they just kind of eyeballed these things, but with CNC, they should be pretty good. Um, it is just a, a visual thing anyway. So that way I can go ahead and mark the center line at each end. 
For this guy, obviously these holes are offset because of the uh, tremolo arm. So the trick is to measure the distance from one edge to the center of the DNG string holes and then transfer that to each end. Uh, and that way I can line this up. Right now, of course, there's no strings on the guitar and the bridge is slammed against the top of the body. So that means I've got to favor this end of the uh, oval holes. Uh, so just about there and I think we're good to go. So once I was happy with the fitment of the front and rear plastics, then I could move on to yet more sanding and I finished sanded the whole body up to 400 grit. The timber itself, well, I'm not entirely sure what it is. It's got that slight pinkish tone that makes me think it, well, it looks a lot like alder, but I, I can't be certain. I don't even know where the instrument was actually made, whether it was Chinese or Korean or maybe some other place, I really don't know. Either way though, it's what I would assume you'd call B grade or B stock, as expected from underneath a solid color. It does have quite a few sort of streaks and marks in the uh, timber. So for that reason, I didn't use a traditional spirit stain or dye stain because that would actually just bring out those marks, actually darken those marks. So instead I went for a finish that is a little bit more like the old uh, Fender Hi Highway 1 strats where you can still see the grain through the finish but the colour has a lot more opacity. So I ended up mixing my own stain and it was basically a, a coloured Danish oil. I've already got another video about mixing your own Danish oil or true oil so check it out. For this guy what I did to add colour and opacity was I just substituted some of my oil based poly for some red oil based enamel. Nice bright red color, but it was pretty clear that um, in that first application it was gonna to be too orange. So I mixed up another batch with another tin of red oil based enamel that I had in the shed. This is a darker red color and it's come out a lot nicer. This is actually a metal paint, but it's, it's fine. An, an oil based epoxy enamel, you can actually mix that in with that sort of Danish oil style finish. And I just wiped on, oh maybe, I think it was about three or four coats. Uh, each coat I added a second pass around the edges to build a little bit more color, a little bit more coverage on those uh, sort of weird marks that were there. When I was happy with the color and the coverage, I would normally have just put this aside for uh, maybe four or five days, maybe up to a week to cure out uh, before the clear coat. But as happens, sometimes I got kind of sidetracked and distracted with a bunch of other projects and this ended up sitting around for uh, a couple of months actually. But at least I knew that Danish oil or that red Danish oil finish was completely cured. Uh, so I gave it a light scuff just with some 4 steel wool just to make sure it was super, super smooth. And then I've gone ahead and given it uh, three or four good wet coats with this guy, just a rattle can from the hardware store, a semi-gloss clear coat. The only issue with spraying semi-gloss clear or matte clear in a DIY setting when you don't really have a spray booth and all that sort of stuff is that, well, you kind of have to psych yourself into it. If it was a gloss, it doesn't really matter if there's a few blemishes in that final coat because you're going to be wet sanding and buffing it all out anyway. But with a semi-gloss, if you do get a few blemishes, there's not a hell of a lot you can do. As it happens, I did actually get a little bit of spitting from the can on my final coat. Uh, luckily, it's just on the rear and I immediately clamped the body flat and it's actually flowed out. You can't even feel them, they're, they're not raised at all. But what it means when you have that slight build up of finish in that little spot, it means that the matting agent doesn't really float to the surface evenly and you do, well in this case I've been left with some spots that are slightly shiny. Again, they're on the back so I can live with it. But I am gonna have a go at just trying to very carefully and locally degloss those, maybe with some Scotch-Brite. But overall, I'm happy with the finish. I think it looks really cool. I'm really digging semi-gloss and matte finishes these days, not just for guitars, but for pedals and stuff as well. 
The next step I think will be um, some shielding. I'm also going to finish wiring up my new black pick guard. Uh, as for the neck, I'm not really sure. I'm, I would love to do another kind of tattoo treatment like I did with Project Barocca, but uh, all of that stuff will be in future videos on this Project Guitar. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.